Good afternoon and welcome to New York Crypto Talk. Thanks for joining me for my weekly spotlight series. I know this is a couple of days late, but I will be doing my last Keeping Safe in Crypto Security series. Last week I reviewed two-factor authentication. I will link that at the end of this video. Today I will be talking about the most secure way to store your crypto funds, and this is a cold storage device similar to that of hardware wallet, but this is almost a DIY version of it, and it allows you to have a lot more functionality than a hardware wallet. Obviously, it is a lot more complicated, so this is a more advanced series. If you are just a new user and, and do not have the technical background to be able to work in an operating system and to utilize software like Linux, I would definitely recommend you just to get the hardware wallet, either a Trezor or a Ledger Nano S. But this personally, I think, is a great method to be able to utilize cryptocurrency and to have a safe environment for you to keep your funds and have a lot more flexibility when it comes to those funds. So basically what I'm going to be explaining today is a air gap device so a little background this is a technology that people have been using for many many years and basically what it is is a device that has no internet connectivity and it is a standalone device so similar to a hardware wallet where it is not actually connected to the network it is just generating a transaction the same thing goes for an air gap device basically what we're going to be able to do is take a device i.e. a laptop and basically utilize that as a hardware device that will generate a transaction for your hardware wallet whether it be Bitcoin or Ethereum on my Ether wallet and use a Linux based OS which is a lot more secure than Windows or Apple and we can utilize cheap hardware such as a old laptop old desktop or a Chromebook which can be readily had for only a hundred two hundred dollars so going into it, these are the things that you would need. Obviously, not everything is needed. This is just personally what I would do, and I'll go through each one of these on kind of what are the four main things that I personally would use for a cold storage device. One is the air gap device. Then there's an online device, which is actually going to be an internet-enabled device that will send the transaction. So this will be your regular PC, your regular computer, the regular device that you would normally use to send a transaction. A new USB drive, a brand new USB drive. Do not use old devices. Obviously, they can be corrupt. I'm going to try to be as thorough as possible sure that you guys are super secure obviously there are always going to be faults there's always going to be ways around things so obviously do your own research but I will try to be as thorough as possible so new USB drives are best also if you have CDRs lying around which I personally have over like 200 of them just sitting around uh, from back in the day from probably 10 years ago but CDRs um, CD rewritable or a CD writable disk you can use a lot of those for sending the transaction from your air gap device to an online device. And then the last thing that I think everyone needs with this kind of process is patience. So obviously if you're using a cold storage device, there's going to be a lot more steps. There's going to be a lot more time to be able to send a transaction. And that of course takes a lot of time out of people, but there is sense of security when it comes to utilizing this method so that you do not have to worry about your funds. I'm just going to go into each one of these devices and kind of give you a little heads up on how they use it. Then I'll go show you some examples of sites as well as the different things that can be done with this process. So looking first at the air gap device. Device to generate the transaction and I put here USB and CDR so you can take that transaction that was generated on the air gap device, put it on a brand new USB, and then transfer that to the online device to be able to sign it and send out the actual transaction hash. Or if you want to even be more secure because CDR is a cold storage medium by itself, it is a little bit more secure since there's not a vulnerability that can be had with a USB device since there's no microchips, there's no processors, there's no hacks that can be done for CDR. So if you have extra CDRs uh, lying around, rewritable disks, you can actually utilize those and then use that for every hash that goes out. 
So no internet. What do I mean by this? So most people think that they can just disable in the network configuration and remove or disable their Wi-Fi as well as their Ethernet. If you really want to be safe, you can actually open up the laptop itself and pull out the Wi-Fi card. You usually can't pull out the actual LAN card, but there are ways and tutorials online on how to be able to disable those devices physically as opposed to just through software but usually Linux is very safe when it comes to the Ethernet obviously if you you can't actually connect a device to it it won't be a vulnerability but the Wi-Fi should be removed from the actual device I definitely recommend removing the Wi-Fi chip from your laptop there are a lot of videos out there that you can find that will show you how to do it it is usually two screws and it'll just pull right out of a slot I recommend using Linux OS, a fresh install of it. Obviously, I mentioned here Tails. Tails is a security-based OS for Linux that has Bitcoin uh, Electrum Wallet already installed, as well as it has an amnesiac OS. Basically, everything every time you restart it, it will refresh itself. It is also a live CD, so you can actually run it right off a USB drive. So going to Linux OS, the reason I like it is because most of the time for older hardware, you can pretty much find an OS that will run pretty much any type of old laptop, any type of old desktop. There will be different OSs that I'll talk about, Lubuntu, Puppy Linux, Tails, all these things usually can run on a lot less memory, a lot less storage. And you can use these, there's a lot of lightweight OS's that you can find online and a lot of them are very good they work on old devices I'm currently running Linux OS on one of my old Dell laptops just for the heck of it just to play around with things and just to see how it would work with things like writing my blogs and steam posts and so forth so there is the, the advantages of Linux on an old device then of course you need the offline version of my ether wallet I will show the link and I will uh, put it in the description below basically this is the offline version of my ether wallet that is an HTML file that you can open up on your offline device and it will allow you to basically create the transaction with your key store and then once you log in with your key store which you can encrypt on another USB uh, which I'll talk about in shortly so you can have multiple USB drives one of them I would put the key store on and that wouldn't be an encrypted USB the Electrum wallet if you don't use Tails OS not many Linux OS come with it pre-installed that's why I like Tails OS because it has Electrum wallet already installed you can get that and transfer it via USB to your device obviously the initial device that you use to transfer that via USB you need to make sure it's secure I would scan uh, the actual drive itself once you have everything on there that it is safe and then looking at the actual devices I recommend anybody who's looking at doing this and wants to play around with uh, getting an old laptop to look into ThinkPad laptops on eBay. They actually have quite a few of them that are running Intel Core 2 Duos and faster devices and you can have them for under $100. Chromebook, there are plenty out there from $100 to $200 that are very easy and do run Linux very well. I would avoid the Intel Atom processor based Chromebooks and look for the Intel Celeron Chromebooks because they'll run better and of course Intel Core 2 Duo if they have any of those uh, definitely look at those. The brand new USB drives, as I mentioned, look to get a brand new USB as well as CDRs and two I drives would be ideal because then you, you can encrypt your key store as well as any of your passwords and utilize that on your secondary drive that will not touch the actual online device. It is just used for your offline device for your passwords and your key store. So the online device will be what is used to send the transaction. Of course, this should be a clean install. I would also do a clean install on an online device. And if you do not mind Linux, I would also use Linux as your main online device just for crypto exchanges and so forth because it is a lot more secure. There is firewalls. There's antivirus, anti-spyware, a lot more host intrusion prevention systems built into Linux as opposed to Mac and Windows. So don't use the computer for regular internet usage. If you're utilizing exchanges, you should always try to make sure that you separate yourself from online devices for both regular browsing as well as cryptocurrency. Of course, have your antivirus firewall, anti-malware protection installed on the device. 
and then patience as I mentioned before because you will need it if you are using this kind of process it is a lot more complicated but it is well worth it so looking at the different types of Linux software, as I mentioned, Lubuntu is one of the lightweight operating systems that's very common when it comes to people utilizing old software. So definitely check out Lubuntu. And then there's many releases of Puppy Linux. Uh, Xenopup is one of the more common ones that people use. It does look very old, but you can utilize this with very low hardware information. I believe it might be 128 megabytes in memory that you need as a minimum. Uh, and they support both 32 and 64 bit in a lot of these uh, operating systems and they talk about how big the actual ISO size is so you can see that the ISO is only 208 megabytes and that's how big the actual CD or USB drive would be that is very very small for an operating system so it's awesome to see that some of these are so small but they will be able to run your computer and it'll feel almost like a brand new refresh Tails OS as I mentioned it is basically a based uh, amnesic incognito live system so this also includes the tour browser obviously you don't need to utilize this information functionality behind the Bitcoin Electrum wallet being able to remove any of the information that you did previously obviously you need to look into the tails OS because of the amnesic part of the software you need to make sure that you don't save anything you can't save your actual data store or your actual onto the drive because it will get removed you can create a persistent storage on it there is FAQs on tails website on how to do a persistent storage and now allow you to save things over and over again you can also add software to persistent storage you can add my ether wallet to persistent storage so you don't have to keep uh, utilizing it from a USB drive every time and then there's good information here on my ether wallet how to make an offline transaction I won't spend the time on this video doing it because it can be very very uh, lengthy and I don't want to waste the time on this I wanted to give more of the ground rules on creating the cold storage device so you can definitely look at my ether wallet and it basically tells you and here's just my steps is basically you use your online device to figure out what the gas price is and the nuances and then you basically keep that information you write it down and then to your offline computer you go to offline transaction you um, put your key store or your information in to get open your wallet and then you can actually fill out the information you can leave the gas limit at what it's at and then basically you'll send and create a transaction and then you have to send the transaction via USB or CDR and then you can basically bring that to your online device and your online device will actually send the transaction over and broadcast it over the network so that's the basics of the offline transaction and you can go to my ether wallet and they will this it looks exactly like the online transaction for utilizing this functionality the HTML that you'll see when you download the actual client and that is available on their github here you can see the latest version of my ether wallet offline is 3.21.08 when you're watching this obviously it might have changed because this was published about eight days ago so they might be up for a new release in the next couple of days they do update this with all the actual tokens since it's an offline thing they won't be able to actually update it so if a new token comes out today obviously it won't be on the offline availability as i mentioned before definitely look at lenovo thinkpads lenovo thinkpads are corporate devices generally you can find great deals on them companies usually sell these online and they're very cheap sometimes they come without a hard drive which is fine because what i would recommend if anybody bought a computer online sometimes these devices even though they have good specs the hard drive is a little slow because laptop hard drives generally don't have have the RPMs that you would need for a device so you can always get an SSD drive for cheap but if you're doing this literally just for the offline cold storage method the, the hard drive they provide you should be very sufficient for what you need it to do so as you can see here you can find many devices hundred dollars a couple of them might have a little scratches on them but for the most part you can find some really nice Intel Core i3 i5s on the site for pretty good deals I wish I knew this before I actually bought 
a uh, another device, I would have bought a ThinkPad. So definitely check that out. So as far as cold storage device goes, I definitely think the utilization of this type of device as opposed to a hardware wallet has its pros and cons. Obviously the time is definitely going to be a lot more when it comes to the cold storage device, but you kind of have the customization in it. The price will wind up being approximately the same as if you had used a hardware device because you can probably get the laptop for about $100, give or take with the USB drives. You know, you might spend another 15 20 bucks on two USB drives. So it might be give or take around the same, but you will have a lot more things like unique wallets will be able to be utilized on this cold storage device as opposed to a hardware wallet, which might not support every single wallet. So as long as it supports Linux, you will be able to utilize it on the cold storage device. The, you know, when it comes down to it, I like being able to have a cold storage device and I can also have a hardware wallet so I can have multiple locations on where my device is stored. Having this information in multiple locations keeps you more secure, especially in the day and age when things are happening all the time. My Ether wallet had just had a DNS attack only a couple of days ago and they are now dealing with the outcome of that. So obviously, you know, when it comes to being safe in crypto, you need to take as much precaution as possible. I would personally recommend get a laptop, rip out the Wi-Fi card, put a fresh install of Linux on it, make sure you use it only for that. It's an air gap device. Send the transaction directly from that air gap device to an online device, and then write down all the other information you need and store it on a password generator and then do it in multiple locations as I've mentioned in the past three pieces of paper for your actual recovery key and you'll try to be as safe as possible just make sure you have good software as I have talked about in the past two-factor authentication good browser good antivirus and having good hardware everything collaborated together you can be safe in crypto obviously everything is prone to attack so do your own research i hope you guys like this i hope you guys enjoyed this series i will be doing a new series coming soon hope you guys like subscribe shoot me a message let me know what you guys think i hope you guys have a fantastic day thanks again